The scripture reading this morning is from Galatians 3, 23 through 29. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian, for in Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. By now, many, if not all of you, have probably seen the United Methodist motto, open hearts, open minds, open doors. Basically, this is what Paul is talking about in this passage. Because faith in Christ makes us one, eliminating all distinctions and prejudices. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male or female, for you are all one in Christ. This is a startling truth when we think about the context in which it was written. It was written nearly 2,000 years ago when Jews thought they were the chosen race and looked down on everyone else. It was written long before the abolition of slavery. It was written when women were generally thought of having no rights whatsoever. They were merely and literally property of men who could probably much and could get away with pretty much anything that they wanted to do. It went completely against the grain of the way everyone up till then, to that point, had thought. Therefore, it is unbelievably radical statement. And it gives us an incredible insight into the big picture of what Christianity is all about. And unfortunately, many of us have not gotten that big picture even today even 2,000 years later. Everyone is on an equal footing before Jesus Christ. God makes no distinctions, even if we do. Yes, Jesus Christ accepts all of us, accepts all of us through faith in him. God loves everyone. God looks at the inside of people rather than the outside. Jesus Christ reaches out and embraces all people, calling all people to come to the faith with him. And so should we. The barriers that get in our way, color, nationality, gender, social stratus, sexual orientation, or any other differences mean nothing to God. For we are all have sinned and we have all fallen short of God's glory. Therefore, we are not to judge other people just because they are different than we are. As a matter of fact, Jesus tells us that we are not to judge anyone As Jesus declares in Matthew chapter 7, do not judge or you will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, 
you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Jesus did not come into the world to condemn the world, but he came in to save it. And Jesus did not go around wagging his finger at people, judging them. As a matter of fact, the only people that Jesus condemned were the people who were doing the judging. Those people called, he called snakes, vipers, and asked them, how will you escape the condemnation of hell? He called them hypocrites and told them that they shut the kingdom of heaven to men and women's faces. He told them that they were like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of dead men's bones and everything unclean. He said on the outside they appear to be people as righteous, but on the inside they are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. And these were the religious leaders at the time. And these were the people who eventually put Jesus to death. Think about it. A guy like Jesus could have had a pretty cushy job between, within the righteous establishment. He could have been given a tenth of his spices, his mint, dill, and cumin, but neglected the more important matters of law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. He could have worn luxurious clothing and made the tassels on the garments long for everyone to see. And the establishment would have thought that this was just fine. They would say, boy, that Jesus sure is a neat religious guy. I just love the way he takes the place of honor at banquets, the most important seats in our synagogues. He'd be such a good politician. Just look how he loves to be greeted in the marketplaces to have people call him rabbi. And this is, this brings me to remember Grant Hayega, who was a true man of humility. He never did anything that way. But let's face it. Jesus was not like the establishment. The religious leaders did not like it when Jesus stopped them from stoning a prostitute. He did not join them when they were about to kill another human being because of their sin. He didn't join the crowd when they were verbally attacking her by naming her sins so that everyone would know so that everyone else could feel good about their self-righteousness. He put a stop to it. He shed light on the situation. After all, he is the light of the world. And the people who were about to stone the prostitute, they saw that they were just as guilty as she. But there's, that's no fun. That's embarrassing, that's humiliating, and humbling. Jesus spoke to that woman, whom no one else would speak to. He accepted that woman, whom no one else would accept. He saved that woman, whom everyone else wanted to destroy. And what about that woman at the well? Do you realize just how radical Jesus' actions were in that situation? Not only was it demeaning for a man to talk to a woman in that day and age, but for a Jew to talk to a Samaritan woman was unheard of. She was out in the middle of the day by herself, not even her folk, town folk, 
wanted to be seen with her. She was an untouchable, but Jesus touched her. And the entire city was saved because of his touch. And then what about the lepers? Jesus actually hung out with those people. They were his friends. Can you imagine what the religious rulers must have been saying behind their backs? But we don't have to imagine. We know they are say- what they are saying. Crucify him. Crucify the man whose ministry was created by touching the untouchables. Crucify that man whose ministry was not formed in the temple itself, but was formed by going outside to the temple and meeting the spiritual and physical hunger of the people. Interestingly enough, that was the theme of our 2022 annual conference, ending spiritual and physical hunger. And then why is that? Because Jesus did not discriminate. Like the United Methodist logo, Jesus meets people with open heart, saying, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him or her, and he or she with me. Jesus meets people with an open mind, meeting people where they are, not judging them, but loving them, seeing the potential within them, seeing what God, a good God, can do with their lives once they feel God's touch. Jesus meets people with open doors, accepting and forgiving, and recreating anyone who comes to him. This is the big picture. This is what Christianity is all about. This is what we are called to do. We are called to have open hearts, open minds, and open doors. It's up to us to accept people where they are. It's our job to love everyone who comes through our doors. It's our job to meet people with open minds, believing that Jesus Christ meets people where they are, and that he came not to judge people, but to free people. And we are called to have open doors, believing and trusting that through Jesus Christ, all people are equal in the eyes of God. We are called to do what Jesus did. We are called to be friends with the outcast, to show them Christian love, to offer them living water, to tell them about Jesus without judging them and let them know that Jesus loves them to prove to them that not all church doors have been shut in their faces. Let's invite them to our homes and minister to them. Let's do what Jesus did. Let's offer them a place where they too can worship God. Let's find young people who are on drugs, who are feeling all alone, who have green hair, pink hair, nose rings, baggy jeans, or who are angry, who have unhappy faces. And then let's tell them about Christ. Let's accept them for who they are and not let God take and let God take care of the rest. This world, this society, this city needs happiness, peace, love, joy, 
that only comes from knowing Jesus Christ. We are this world's only hope. We are Christ's body. This is a fantastic assembly of believers, saints of God, who have tasted and found the Lord is good, who generously give to the causes of the church, and who want everyone to come inside these doors and find Christ. What a wonderful blessing Victorville United Methodist Church is. The people of this place do great things, and we can do even greater things than these. Let's go outside the doors of this building and spread the love of Christ to people who are hurting, people who are filled that feel as if no one loves them. People who have been marginalized and discriminated against. People who have been verbally attacked and judged by the very institutions who claim to love them. We are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. We are called to do what Jesus did. We are called to see the big picture by truly being the people of the United Methodist Church, people with open hearts, open minds, and open doors. Amen. Okay, our next hymn is going to be In Christ there is no east or west, number 548. This is one of the ones that we sung at annual conference, so how appropriate that is. Let's close in prayer. Lord Jesus, we came into this place this morning to offer the sacrifice worship. We have had an awesome time. Thank you for speaking to us. Some of us came into this place with broken hearts, but you have mended them. Others came depressed. You were their only hope. Father, you have shown yourself strong in their lives. Guide us as we go back to our homes. Show us the right way to follow throughout the week. And we come back, we shall testify the great things that you have done in our lives. In Jesus' name, we believe and we pray. Amen.
Our closing hymn will be For the Healing of the Nations, number 428. And that's what we've been charged to do, to heal the nations. Now receive this blessing of an almighty God who loves you and watches over you and goes with you everywhere. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go and be God's blessing. Amen. <laughs>